join me in these three simple exercises so that you can give some love and attention to those knees so that they'll stop screaming at you. I'm Stephanie Carter Kelly, a physical therapist that uses yoga in everything that I do. So let's just do a few exercises to notice the knees. I'm down here on the floor. I'm in my socks because it allows me to slide across the floor on the carpet. You could do this on a wood floor. You don't want your sticky yoga mat for this, but the first thing I want you to do is just to kind of prop yourself up on your hands. You can sit up if you like to, if that's not too much tension in your legs, but just prop yourself up on your hands and tighten your thighs and then relax your thighs. Tighten and relax, tighten and relax. And the goal with this tightening and relaxation is to really localize all the effort right into your quads, right into the front of the thighs. You don't want your bunk butt clenching or your hamstring squeezing. Just, you know, try to relax your legs and just tighten and release. It's hard to see, but it's just tighten. I can't, you can't really see it. Tighten and release. Tighten and release. You can see a little bit of change. Tighten and release. And that's what you're looking for. You're just looking to bulk up that quad and relax. Tighten and relax. So what happens when you tighten and relax is you tell this muscle to work the quad um, and you just tell it to wake up. We need that muscle to work. We need to get the, the kneecap that is encased in the quadriceps tendon. We need to get it sliding and gliding. So what you'll notice as you tighten and release is that your, your patella, your kneecap will slide up as you tighten and then it'll slide down as you relax. When you're relaxed, you should be able to move that kneecap back and forth. When you tighten, it'll be nice and tight. You can't move that kneecap. So that's the goal. Just tighten and release. And just really notice what else you feel. So do that. Just squeeze and release several times and then integrate breathing along with it. Pay attention to... What thoughts come in your mind as you tighten and release? Because sometimes it's, you know, just our thought about our knee and the vulnerability of that knee in this hinge joint between the hip and the ankle. We're scared that that knee is vulnerable for more injury. But if we support it with some really good strength, that knee's not vulnerable. It's going to hold you up. So you can do both at the same time, tighten and release, or one at a time just to give some love and attention individually to those knees. So the next exercise is just bending the knee. And again, you can stay supported on your hands or you can go all the way down onto your back and just slide that knee, slide your heel so that your knee is bent and then straighten it. So this has two purposes, this exercise. If you're trying to really drag your heel, kind of pushing it down to the floor, dragging it back to your hip, that will work your hamstring a little bit. So slowly drag that heel back to the hip and you'll work the back of your thigh or your hamstring that bends the knee. The other reason you do this is just to bend the knee. Work that heel back towards your hip and maybe even grab it and bring it back so that it gets a nice deep knee bend and then straighten it. So you're bending and then straighten. Bend and straighten. See how much you can bend it. Maybe you work it to the bent position. You can always bend it and then move your hip toward your heel so that you can get that nice deep knee bend. And just hang out there and let it stretch. It's okay. That knee is supposed to bend. So even if you feel a little bit of tension across the thigh and into that knee joint, another way you could work on the bending is just to bring that knee towards the chest and, and hug down at the shin, pulling the shin closer to the thigh, and work to bend that knee. These are all normal and natural movements, and you're doing this really to increase the awareness. What do you feel? How much... 
How much movement do you have in that knee? Does that muscle fire? Can you feel it in your hamstring? All these muscles that support the knee. The last exercise is to work a little bit of extension. So I don't have any straightening or extension deficit in my leg. And I actually have a little bit of hyperextension. But some people, when your legs are on the ground, there's a big gap underneath the knee. And so it's kind of stuck in flexion. So if you have any arthritis, if you've had any surgery, if you have any ligament injury or meniscal injury, and you never got that leg back to fully straight, it's okay to hang out. So the, the towel or the blanket roll goes at your ankle, bottom of your shin, and you just hang out here so that you feel a stretch in the back of your knee. You can also add that little bit of quad set or quad muscle activation in order to work that knee a little bit straighter. You can feel different things in the back of the knee if you pull your foot up this way. That'll put a stretch on the, the calf muscle and then you try to straighten it or just let it hang. You may feel a little bit of stretch down into the calf also or a different sensation in the back of the knee. So it's absolutely okay if you feel like that knee is a little bit bent or maybe one is a little bit bent compared to the other, you wanna work and get that knee as straight as you can. It's supposed to go straight. And even if you have some arthritis or some changes in your knee and you've been sort of limping around on a bent knee for a long time, it's okay to work and try to get that knee straight. A bent knee will change how you walk. And the more you can get that knee straight, you can improve your walking and create the balance from the feet all the way up to the hips and into the low back. So those are three exercises. Activate the quad, bend that knee to activate the hamstring and just work on knee flexion range of motion. And then let that, let that knee hang so that you can work on knee extension range of motion if you need it. Just see how all of that feels. Do so with a lot of awareness. You can do this at the end of your day, um, you know, while you're watching TV or something, just, just lie on the floor or even in a recliner chair, work that knee back and forth um, and work to start contracting those muscles those muscles are super important to support that knee so that it doesn't feel vulnerable. So let me know after you do these three exercises, what do you feel? How does that feel in your knee? And does it, does it give you any sense of fear to think about moving the knee or starting to contract the muscles around the knee? Does that like give you any anxiety thinking, oh, I'm scared to do that because I'm afraid I'll do more damage to my knee. Let me know. I'm curious. My goal is to give you more and more sense of confidence in that knee when it has full range and when it begins to feel stronger. So again, I'm Stephanie Carter Kelly. I'm a physical therapist that uses yoga in everything I do. So that's why you see that breathing and the mindfulness as a part of your normal knee exercises. Go a, go a few steps more and really discover what is holding you back from the full potential of that knee. Have a great rest of your day. Namaste.